I heard the last song that you played, Nancy Lee. Thanks for that. Is there anybody else humming along in their head with that one? Yeah, yeah, let it begin with me. Good morning. In case you haven't guessed, my back is no better than it was last week, and I'm getting an MRI this Thursday and hopefully uh, better times ahead, but this must be what it feels like to get old. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Had I known this, I would have been treating you with a whole lot more sympathy all along instead of poking fun at your aging backs and whatever else is going on, but uh, glad you're here this morning. Uh, Let's see, uh, in a second, Lorna, why don't you go ahead and start walking up here because uh, I'm not, I don't have much to say. Next week, we have the big bike giveaway, um, as well as teaching them a little bit of basic uh, maintenance. And whoever came up with this idea, it's just wonderful. Thank you for this. I love it when beautiful things happen in this congregation that I had nothing to do with, you know? <laughs> well, because that's where it all comes from, you know? When you get your next pastor, if you think that, that pastor is going to be the only one coming up with ideas and the only one doing anything around here, well, you're sadly mistaken. You guys got this. You guys are the church. The pastor's here to help you with that, okay? So keep up the good work. Keep coming up with really weird ideas like getting, I don't know, what are we up to? About Anybody know how many bikes? Last I heard it was 150. Yeah, I know. Yeah, God, God, God grant that 150 kids will actually come and get the bikes. Wouldn't that be nice? What's that? Oh, adults, okay, well, then I have no problem whatsoever. No, I mean, we've got no idea who's going to show up, but it, none of the fact that we've got 150 bikes that are ready to ride is just an amazing thing to me. So, uh, and we'll have another baptism next week. Boy, I tell you, they're just, these babies are dropping right from the skies like storks take, brought them here or something like that. All right, Lorna, get there up there, get your, get your little self up there and make some announcements, would you? Okay, good morning. Um, the Parish Education Committee has decided that we will be having Vacation Bible School, and we are going to have it on June 6th, 7th, and 8th uh, from 5.30 to 8, and postcards have been sent out to the children that we feel um, would be interested, but Kathy Werps and I are going to be standing in the back after church and you take a postcard if you know of someone that you think might be interested um, in coming that maybe we haven't, um, that we've overlooked somehow. Um, we still need volunteers for helpers, for, for crafts, um, for games. I thought, I thought there was a limit on the number of adults to be involved with this. You mean any number of adults? Any number. We'd have something for them to We'd do? We'd have something for them to do. Okay, so you're all invited. See, yeah. isn't that wonderful? You thought that you couldn't come to VBS? No, you can, and we'll put you to work. So if you'd like to volunteer for one night, three nights, um, for one hour, uh, whatever part of that, please let Bobby Jo know in the office, and she will let one of us know that you're interested. And if you... Um, for the meal, the women, if you're in a work group, um, the work group chairman will be called to set up the meals. So that will be done this coming week, I believe. So, all right, if you have any questions, um, Kathy and I will be in the back and you can ask them at that time. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Lorna. Uh, I invite you to stand as we begin our worship. And is there, is there anything else? Okay, good. Let's get down to worship. Come on up. Got some water to pour here. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Christ, Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. 
You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. Lord, set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory Can you guys sing liturgy or what? <laughs> we got we, we got to do that a cappella again and, and like about a third lower, don't you think? Yeah, okay. Maybe next time. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into what one will. <clears throat> Love what you command and desire what you promise. 
that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and let's sing again. The first reading is from Acts chapter 16, 16 through 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, 
Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he as an entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Here ends the reading. The psalm is Psalm 97, and we'll read it responsively. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. Lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens declare your righteousness, O Lord, and all the people see your glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. God guards the lives of the saints and rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. The second reading is from Revelations chapter 22, starting at the 12th verse. See, I am coming soon. My re reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift, the one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Here ends the reading. The Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved, me, loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, 
so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our souls be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our salvation. Amen. 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 Well, first of all, Memorial Day. I'm glad that there's a Memorial Day because it draws our attention to the sacrifices that individuals are willing to make for a greater good. So thank you for all of these people who are willing to lay down their lives. The circumstances of them vary greatly. Some died as heroes, saving the lives of many, some by accident, but nonetheless, to put yourself in that position where you are in harm's way for others, doesn't it embody, in a sense, what Jesus said, greater love has no one than to lay down their life for their brothers and sisters. Um, so, happy Memorial Day. Um, now into the scriptures, but I, we might find some similarity. Um, it's interesting, this is the point in Acts. If you ever read all the way through Acts, which uh, I'd suggest you do sometimes, it's a pretty good read. It takes a little bit of unpacking, but uh, it goes from they, you know, from thir third person to first person here. One day as we are, we're going to the place of prayer. All right, it's just an interesting uh, literary technique. So there's a slave girl. They're in Philippi, which from his letter to Philippi, oddly enough, uh, Paul had a tremendous relationship with his congregation. It's the happiest letter that he ever wrote. Um, but it didn't start out, start out very good. It's, it's like trouble follows Paul wherever he goes. Do you notice that? And everywhere he goes, is there's just trouble. Now, why is that? Why do you suppose Paul got in trouble? Well, the one mission that he had is to get the word out about Jesus Christ to the entire world as much as it was within his power, and that's what he did. So we can only assume that he got in trouble because somehow the gospel of Jesus Christ stirs up trouble. And why do you think that Jesus got killed? He, he stirred up trouble and he wouldn't shut up and he wouldn't stop doing the things that he was doing. So. This slave girl keeps following them around, and it's an interesting message, and we can only speculate at what part about this annoyed Paul so greatly, but what she said is, uh, uh, these men are slaves of the Most High God. Well, so far I don't see anything that's to be pro protested there. Who proclaim to you a way of salvation. Well, you know, maybe the A way would have been objectionable to Paul, but Nonetheless, it sounds like they got somebody to promote their cause here, so I'm going, you know, wouldn't we all like that? I mean, could I get somebody to walk on around the town and say, hey, there's this guy, he's a slave of the Most High God, he's going to be at Christ Lutheran Church, he's going to be the one up in the pulpit. He has words, are you a way of salvation? You know, wouldn't that be great? You know, I think I kind of like it. But I, I imagine the point here was, is that this slave girl just wouldn't shut up. Paul's trying to preach a sermon. And she keeps going on like this. The first time that I ever prayed with a Pentecostal Christian, um, there was a young woman, uh, I think she was in early high school, junior high, had very bad asthma and she was in the hospital. So I went to visit her. Her mom was there with a friend of hers. And it comes that point when I visit where I say, hey, do you want to pray? And uh, I said, so let's pray then. And so I start praying and this woman, kind of keeps talking during my prayer, hallelujah, amen, praise Jesus, as I'm trying to pray. And I wanted to stop and say, when I said, let us pray, what I meant is, I'm going to talk to God and you shut up and listen, right? It's very annoying that you keep going on like that. Actually, at the end of the prayer, I kind of went, that's kind of cool. Can we get that going all the time? Can you, you know, if I'm on the right track, give me a hallelujah or praise Jesus, okay? If I'm going the wrong way, maybe go, whoa, something like that, but uh, tell me how I'm doing. Um, but I'm guessing that she was doing this while Paul was trying to proclaim this message that was so dear to him that he was willing to risk his life to do. But whatever it is, I just think it's kind of funny, and I, th I think it's intended to be funny, uh, because it says, but Paul, very much annoyed. <laughs> you know, he does this, this miracle because he's annoyed. But nonetheless, I mean, you, 
it's not good to be, you know, it doesn't say that it's an evil spirit at all, but nonetheless to be occupied and to be driven by this foreign spirit, this entity, can't be the way that God intended anybody to live their life. So I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. And then immediately you see the consequences for this. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, <laughs> isn't that funny? And whenever you hear money, I think power and control. Isn't that it? We think that if we get enough money that, you know, I don't know. I just think of these guys that have billions and billions of dollars, and I think they think they're going to live forever, and they've got to you know, hedge against anything bad that could happen to them because, you know, they got more money than the U.S., you know? I mean, how, how far in debt are we? So it's like, you know, they could buy a couple of countries if they wanted to with the amount of money that they have. And I'm pretty sure we look to them, we get all jealous. Boy, I wish I had billions and billions of dollars. But in the, the, their money, their, their, their money, you know, the gravy train is gone. This woman was making them big bucks. I mean, you think about it today. I mean, how many, is, is there still, do you still have lines that you can call in and talk to psychics? Right? Remember, that was a really big thing, but there are psychics in the world. People pay big money to go and feel like they know what's going on, the secrets that psychics can reveal. But what they did was they dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. Well, was there any indication that was happening? No, it's a lie. They are Jews. Well, that much is true. Okay. And are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as, okay, you bring in law and order, right? Isn't that, that's always a good trick. Law and order. Uh, that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. And then the crowd joined in and attacking them. Isn't that funny what you can do with a crowd and how quickly you can get them whipped up? You know, we saw this during Holy Week, didn't we? When Jesus entered riding on the, a colt on a donkey, Boy, I tell you, I mean, high praise. People throwing their coats down, palms on there. Hosanna to the, you know, the son of David. Hosanna to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And not four, four days later, five days later, they managed to whip up the crowd on the negative side. Apparently, whipping up a crowd is pretty easy to do. I, I've seen it happen a few times in my life where somebody comes in and, you know, is it? So they whipped them up, and so the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they'd given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in stocks. <sighs> wow. Things aren't going well for Paul. Now, ordinary people like us might think, well, that was a mistake. Yes, I'll never do that again. And other people looking at it go, well, you know, if they had just, if they had just done what they were told, if they had obeyed the laws, this never would have happened to them. But clearly the way the story is told is that they didn't do anything. It was a bunch of lies. So I want you to think about that. Just because somebody got in trouble with the law doesn't necessarily mean they did anything wrong could mean they're doing things that could mean they're doing the work of the Lord. So while they're there at midnight, and you have to, this is a, you know, this is such an image, isn't it? Like, could it gone, have gone worse? Because probably the next thing is they're just going to kill them. That, that's the next step in this scenario. So they're down there in this horrible place. And actually, the way that it worked in Roman prisons is they didn't feed you. The only way that you got food is if you had friends and relatives. So they're in a strange town. So they're going to starve to death if nothing else, as long as they keep them there. And what Paul and Silas are doing is praying and singing hymns at midnight in this place, in the middle of the night. And the prisoners were listening. Well, they probably didn't. Their internet was probably down, the prisoners, and, you know, the the cable was out, so there was nothing else to do at midnight, but listen to these guys. But why in the world are they doing that? They're praying and they're singing hymns when everything has gone wrong. It couldn't have gone worse unless they were dead, but that's coming shortly. <coughs> and suddenly, and we don't say God sent this earthquake, but there was an earthquake, and it was so violent that it knocked the hinges off the doors and all their shackles fell off. And I'm going, okay, I'm a believer in God. When that happens, right, I'm thinking, I'm out of here. Thank you, Jesus, right? 
send an earthquake. Every, I mean, clearly, this is a sign that I'm supposed to leave now. The only problem is the guard. Paul knows how this works. If you're a guard and all your prisoners escape, you don't want to know what the Romans are going to do to you. It's better if you just fall on your own sword. And so the, the soldiers about, the guards about to do that, and Paul says, wait, don't do it. We're all still here. You've got to be kidding me. Nobody left? Nobody left. Why? The only thing I can think of is Paul said, hey, we're not leaving because this guy's going to lose his life. And they're going, why should we care about him? Because of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're called, we're compelled to care about people who aren't us. It's just the way that it works. So I guess, I don't know, what do you say about all this stuff? Apparently when you follow Jesus Christ, sometimes it gets you in trouble. Who was it? Uh, Lewis, a uh, uh, black representative from the South, uh, marched with, uh, with Martin Luther King. I'm blanking on his name, but he says, get into trouble, good trouble. Okay? What was the news of the week this week? Can you tell me one headline that still you care this morning, carry this morning? The shooting. It's the 27th one so far this year. We're not even in the 22nd week. And every time it happens, we do nothing. We do nothing, which kind of says apparently we're okay with this. Apparently we're okay sending our kids to school and not knowing if they're coming back home that day. In Revelation, what does it say? <laughs> See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. Now, this doesn't say that those who have done bad or neglect to do what's good are going to hell. I mean, it, he mentions rewards, so maybe if you've been really good, you get greater rewards or something like that. It doesn't have to do with salvation here, I don't think. I don't think that's what's being said. But, you know, we have to be aware that God is watching us. We have to be aware. I, what I always try to remember is that who's going to remember what we did? I mean, I look around at us and I go, you know, within 25 years, how many of us are still going to be standing? You know, we're not going to be here to remember. Who's going to remember our legacy? Our kids and our grandkids, and they're watching us now. And they will judge us, as kids always do. And I guess I haven't talked to any kids about what they think about what's happened and what continues to happen. But one of the questions I think I would ask is, what are you adults going to do to make sure that we stay safe and we don't need to worry about this anymore? That's a question I have for you. And as a church of Jesus Christ and as people who are called to get into good trouble, are you ready to get into some good trouble now? Are you ready to finally do something, to have the will, the courage? And by the way, if you begin to go down this road of actually taking action on this in some meaningful way, people will not like you. You know where you live. This will be seen as political activism and, you know, you don't do that. You know, we're supposed to be people of peace and don't have anything to do with the world. We come here and we're undisturbed. May I undisturb draw near thee. I mean, that's our idea. We come here and kids, you know, if anybody gets loud or anything like that, even a kid, you know, starts get acting up and we go, oh, 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 they're disturbing our peace. It's our worship service. And we got to, don't make any noise. Just get along. Be people of peace. Which one of Jesus' followers didn't get into trouble? We don't know, it's not in the scriptures, but early church history indicates that all of the apostles died martyrs, except for John, who died old and alone. What are we going to do about it? Because i got to tell you this, you know, are we pro-life or are we not pro-life? 
And part of the Christian ethos is to take care of those who are vulnerable in our society. If kids aren't vulnerable in our society, who is? And I guess as Christians, whose heart belongs to Jesus, for whom kids are precious, can you imagine if that happened here? And we say, well, it couldn't happen here. I'm here to tell you, I'm willing to bet there are more guns than people in Murray County. What do you think? I don't own any, but I'm sure there are people that have two dozen of them. I'm sorry, I'm brokenhearted this morning, and I don't know what to do about it. So I'm looking to you. What do you want to do about this? For God's sake, what are we going to do? For the love of God, for Christ's sake, what are we going to do? I can't take it anymore. The school shooting of the week. Sometimes we get two. I am disgusted and I'm fed up. And I'm ready to do something that doesn't involve guns, <laughs> right? We're not going to, you know, lock and load and go and shoot all the bad guys, you know, because sometimes the bad guys are us or our kids or our relatives or our friends. For the love of God, can we do something about this? At least try. Amen. I invite you to stand. You're already standing. You're a step ahead of me. Let's confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and was buried. Then, on the third day, he rose again. Living in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death. We pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for the community of Uvalde, Texas, and especially those whose children and family members were murdered this last week. Show us the way, Lord. Give us the will to do your will so that maybe this doesn't happen anymore. God, in your mercy, make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy, keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. God, in your mercy, grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. We pray especially for those near to us, for Joyce, Dorothy, Al, and Richard. Dale, David, and Jerry, Gail, Mackenzie, Harris, and Dolores, and all others whom we name before you in our hearts. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy, stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. God, in your mercy. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In spite of everything, the peace of the Lord be with you always, especially today. Share some sign of this, please.
Let's pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant, to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we will wait the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, spirit of freedom, and let the church say amen. amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Please be seated.
Please stand. <clears throat> I've been asked to announce coffee that way after church. Come, all you who are thirsty, and drink coffee down there with us. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. For in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Tell what God has done.